Welcome back. Well, uh, no, no politics this time. It's sports and it's football. A few days to the World Cup now. Namdi Obana joins us this morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good to be here. Uh, and I know it's still in the minds of a lot of Nigerians, and perhaps rightly so. The last two matches that the Super yep. Eagles have played, and uh, perhaps now uh, it's always like that. We don't know what to expect with our first match <laughs> when we're in the World Cup. What do you think? It should just be, yeah, as usual. I mean, uh, like a, a good football fan. Optimistic about our Eagles. Uh, look, the truth is, every World Cup, our build, um, friendly build-ups are not always the best. We've had issues where we've drawn, we've lost. In fact, the only times we had wins before the World Cup, I think, mm -hmm. was 2002, 2010, and those were not particularly our best World Cups by any stretch of anybody's imagination. USA 94, we lost everything. You know, France 98, I think we had one draw, we lost everything. Uh, we, or we don't do well in friendly before the World Cup. And in all fairness to Raw, he said, he, uh, this is what he said, he said he's not playing at the pace he would play at the World Cup. He's testing formations. All he's worried about is that game against Croatia, the first game. We shouldn't worry about the friendlies. Um, you know, he's doing everything he wants to do. What we don't know now is what formation he'll use. Oh. Um, we, we've seen Nigeria play better when we play that 3 But with three at the back, that has John Ogu slotting in. Now, that three at the back. Yeah. Can we successfully play it at the World Cup when we have teams that are very good on the counter? Because if they say our defense is not that strong enough, what do we do? I think that's why they have three at the back. The Uimbo wall as decent a defense as they have. We always said their main floor is when somebody runs right down the middle. They never seem to know who should go and pick him up. I, I think with three at the back, that naturally falls on whoever is standing in the middle. So there's somebody who subconsciously knows it's his duty to go for the man with the ball. Um, thirdly, despite the fact that he has um, Awazie and Omero, he's chosen John Ogu, which means that he's looking for somebody who is comfortable on the ball. What about pace? Well, John Ogu has a bit of pace. He's taller than both our defenders. Um, he's good in the air, he's good with his feet. Um, if we wanted to play ourselves out of the back, he's a good player to start with. Um, he can move up and mark people in the midfield. And if he's tracking back, he understands positioning. Yeah, but what's our style? Do we play out from the back like that? If, if we're looking for a style, then <laughs> I have not seen any yet. The only thing I can say about Ross' game plan is that he likes width. He likes players mm -hmm. moving wide. And I think the fact that in our friendlies, when we played four at the back, you had a situation where um, the likes of Victor Moses were too wide. And I think he saw Alex, he will be more effective down the middle behind the striker against England. So he's looking for a formation that would allow um, Victor Moses and Iwobi to get narrower and get into more dangerous areas in the final third. And to achieve that, you need to have people on your flanks, mm -hmm. which is where Tyrone Ibohe and Brian Ido will come in. They are much better going forward than going back. We've seen Sheo Abdullahi has not really provided much going forward in our friendlies. And we've also had the situation where um, he's, for some reasons best known to him, picked a Chejile. I just think despite his experience and despite the fact that at one point he was Nigeria's best left back, I think in the modern game he doesn't have the pace for it. And we've seen him get cut out a number of times long before our preparations for this World Cup. But maybe he's taking him there for experience or for dressing room. But who would you have preferred? Um, you have Ola, you know, who plays right full back but Who's can he? play left full back. He, he also gets caught. Yeah, but you see he has pace, which means if you were to play this put these three men at the back and use them as wing backs rather than full backs, he'd offer you more going forward. Let's let's talk about because a lot of, what a lot of people are looking at, okay, our defense is not what it should be, but yeah. how about our finishing up front? This is where I have a problem with Ro. He seems to have a group of players he trusts and he is not going to uh, change his mind about that. For those who watch the Syria, saw Crotone, saw Simeon Wanko, we're wondering why he hasn't been given more playing time. The little playing time he has, for Niger he has had for Nigeria, what we've seen is a player who is tall but good with his feet, holds up position well, holds up the ball, brings people into it, and is aerially comfortable. Now, such a player should be given more of a run to play with players like Ihan Acho and Ahmed Musa around him because he can knock things down for them, bring them into the game, and regardless of what you want to say about Musa, his pace is frightening. And that's enough to trouble any defense. We've also not seen him use Kilechi Yanacho often enough because his formations are a bit too rigid. Sometimes I think, look, just go, go old school, play 4 4 2, put Igalo and Yanacho in the box. Yanacho will thrive in that position. You will get goals. The worry most Nigerians 
have, which is where I'm sure your question is coming from, is that we're not creating clear cut chances. We're watching matches and we're wondering where is the goal going to come from. It's almost like we're hoping what, for a goal. What about the accuracy of our passes? We don't have up to 50, up to 60 percent of accuracy in our passes. Again, it comes to adaptation to modern football. Most people are playing high press football. Most people don't want you to hold the ball for long because the logic is if you're not with the ball, you can be dangerous. So if you're, if you're not to hold the ball for long, that means we need to close ranks instead of playing wide. Well, that's where width comes in. Because width means you stretch your position wide. They have to come and get you at the flanks. And when you bring the ball back into the middle, there are fewer people to beat and you create more spaces. We're using width, but we're not using it well. Um, we don't move the ball quick enough. There's still the Nigerian factor of holding on the ball for too long, you know? Which, which is why I think he might also want to do the 4 3 3 that might have um, Ogu and Wilfred Ndidi behind okay. Mikel, Let's which will allow us to remove the ball more, free, we'll remove come more to, freely. We'll come to this in a moment. Say so Nigeria Factor. Let's <laughs> join us again. Welcome back. Well, now let's talk about team play. Yeah. Uh, I heard Mikel, they were saying, look, they need to know when to push up together, fall back together. As a team, yeah. where are we? Well, <laughs> As, as a team, I think we need to remember that this is not USA 94. For a long time, a lot of Nigerians have been thinking about that team, forgetting that team was built over four years. Raw side is a relatively new side, if we're going to be very honest. He's been chopping and changing, and so they still don't have all the pieces in place. Teamwork will depend on team leadership. Who are the leaders in the team? Um, Mikel has to be a leader, and in all fairness to him, he has tried with that. Ekong has done well. So we need more leaders on the pitch. When you have more leaders, there are more people that to look at, and that's when the team can be coordinated because you have leaders all over the pitch. If not, you have a case where, like we've seen in our matches, it's very disjointed, where midfielders hold the ball for three, five seconds, and nobody's making so they runs. They don't understand themselves that much. Nobody's yet. making any runs, and that's that's a problem. Once in a while, you see some good interplay, particularly uh, I've seen on the right hand side, um, Tyrone Ibuwe. When he's coming forward, he makes himself an option for whoever is playing wide up front, so that you can. Come narrow. We need, we need those kind of things. We've seen Brian Do get forward to the point where he has attempts on goal. Mm. What we need now is strikers to understand that these guys are going to do these things. They're going to always get the ball into the box first time, make early runs. I saw Igalo guilty of being yeah. off the pace on one or two occasions. But this, this thing that the, the, the Sparrow said that is good that we have this positive anger and they want to channel it rightly. Yeah. How much of influence do you think that that will have on the team? The truth is, it's, I think it's, it's just going back to the Western philosophy, which is this is the shopping window. Go and show the world what you are made of. And for the first time, if I'm to be fair, I look at our team. Wilfred Indeed is the main man in Leicester. It will be is a factor at Arsenal, you know. So we, we have players who are actually really, Moses, and um, Victor Moses is relevant to Chelsea. So we have players who are relevant to relevant clubs. So that brings a lot of experience. We've had a case where our best players have been in Turkish leagues and Belgian leagues. And we've done decently. So now there's a bit more quality and a bit more ambition in the team. So I think that positive anger is going to come from the supporting cast now. They have to show that they have what it takes to go to the next level. There are lots of players in the team who have a lot to prove. John Ogo has been player of the year and all that in Israel. But he needs that move to a bigger league. He has to come and perform on the biggest stage. Ahmed Musa, back on loan, didn't have a great time at Leicester, needs to show he has what he's made. He's doing what well in CSK, you know? he always, Yes, he always does well in CSK, but that's, <laughs> well, you see, that's his comfort zone. He needs to show that he can play outside that comfort zone. But, but who can forget those fantastic goals against Argentina that he, that he got for us? And that's why he was the first person I mentioned when I started talking about if we're going to play Simeon Wanko, we need to have Ahmed Musa more involved. I understand Ro has the formation, but the World Cup, the truth is, it's just seven games to get to the finals. So, I mean, you can as well just go out, take the risk. I've watched Ro's formation. His selections are pretty rigid. Um, I have issues with some selections. I'd rather have... Are you saying that Ro is not one coach that would quickly make a decision to change formation as quickly as that? I, you know, he, he's less of a tactician and more of a coach. So he will give you a long-term solution, meaning that a raw can build you a dynasty. But in terms of right now, um, something is happening, make a quick change and mm. cause an effect, I'm not really sure. 
Wow. <laughs> and that may be a key factor, but uh, let's see how that goes. And by the way, you're going to be in Russia too, so yep. enjoy yourself. <laughs> I'll <laughs> so there. <laughs> and I'm the Bayern's sports journalist. We'll be back. Uh, no, no, no. That's, that's the show today as well. Just thinking tomorrow. about myself in Russia as well. <laughs> well, too bad. That's it today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Neil Taibbi. Only if you can pronounce the name of all the stadiums where they will be holding the matches, Jim Blaine. <laughs> Thank you so I much for watching. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Goodbye. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions and endorsement of Channels Television.